We'll start the meeting with the Pledge of the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone here tonight. Our uh, first order of business is a public hearing to consider a pr proposed local law amending the village code. Um, I guess I'll read the whole thing rather than just turn it over to Mo because you probably read the same thing. But the will. village of Ballinsville, chapter 345, entitled Zoning, to add Article 27, establishing and setting forth the regulations for the Downer Street Plan Development District for parcels located at unnumbered parcel on Meg's Road, 113 Downer Street, 131 Downer Street, unnumbered, unnumbered parcel on Downer Street, and 197 Downer Street. <coughs> Can I get a reading of the proof of publication, Mo? Notice is hereby given that pursuant to section 7-706 of the Village Law of the State of New York and pursuant to resolution of the Village Board of the Village of Baldwinsville, Adopted June 6, 2019, a public hearing will be held by the Village Board at Village Hall, 16 West Genesee Street, on the 20th day of June at 7.30 p.m. to consider a proposed local law amending the Village Code, Chapter 345, entitled Zoning, to add Article 27, establishing and setting forth the regulations for the Downer Street Plan Development District for parcels located at Unnumbered parcel on Meg's Road, 113 Downer Street, 131 Downer Street, unnumbered parcel on Downer Street, and 197 Downer Street. A copy of the proposed local law may be examined by any interested party at the office of the village clerk. At the time and place of the hearing, all interested persons will give, be given an opportunity to be heard. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposal? Anyone wishing to speak against the proposal? Seeing and hearing none, can I get a motion to adjourn and close the public hearing? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Move on to the regular meeting. Uh, can I get a motion uh, to approve the village board meeting minutes from June 6, 2019? Moved. Second. Any changes, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's carried. I'll abstain because I was not here. Right. I'll abstain. All right. Move on to citizens' comments. Anyone wishing to address the board, come to the microphone, give us your name, and what you have to talk about. I know we have Ken Schmidt scheduled, so you can start it off. Hi, uh, Ken Schmidt, uh, Baldwinsville Rotary. Just wanted to come in. We had a very successful um, Seneca River Day. If any of you attended, uh, you could see we did about uh, 2,500, 2,250 to 2,500 people on the island on Friday night uh, and then had our normal crowds on Saturday. So uh, one of the things I wanted to do was just come in and say, you know, this wouldn't be possible without the help of the village. You know, the um, engineering, police, uh, clerk's office, everybody was extremely helpful and continue to be helpful. You know, it's somewhat invisible, you know, but they're out there and we greatly appreciate it and certainly couldn't do the event, you know, without the help of the village. So uh, looking forward to, you know, to next year and doing it again. Thank you. Good job. It was thank very you. good. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Ken. Thanks. Next up, we have an Eagle Scout presentation. I'll turn this over to Steve. We had an Eagle Scout approach us uh, about a year ago with uh, the possibility of building a kiosk or something in Community Park. After some discussions, we came up with a kiosk that we thought would be nice to uh, present activities that might be going on in the park, maybe some mapping and some other things. Quinn Groupie. Uh, is going to give a presentation of his work. He is a scout here in Baldwinsville. And Quinn, go ahead, please. Um, so I'm here to present my uh, Eagle Scout project that I did over the course of this past year. So skip to the next slide. Um, we, all, we had to start it off with fundraising um, after we got it approved. Uh, so we had a pretty... Um, like, a very good bile drive. It 
it turned out we made a lot of money from it. Like, it was probably the best we've had in our troop. And can you go to the next one? Um, that's the huge pile of bottles and cans. And once, once we got all that money, we started to purchase the materials and we started to work on the roof. And it took us a while to get to it because we needed the tools. Um, but once we got it going, it went good. And we started to work on the bird mouths. Skip the next one. Um, yeah. And then we put it together. And then we started to add shingles with the help of um, Jake Lantry. He's an adult in our troop, and he donated shingles and like roofing supplies, and he was just amazing. We got it done so fast, I wouldn't have known how to do it anyway. Um, next one. And then next part we had to build was the frame to get it ready. Next one. And then on installation day, we measured out the poles, the posts, and uh, we cut notches in them so the roof would sit nicely on the posts so it'll last longer. Next one. And there we are putting it in. And then we, we all lifted the roof up there. <laughs> it was pretty heavy, probably close to 400 pounds. I mean, it's heavy. And let's skip to the next one. That was the whole big group that helped us through this project. And then and there it is after we added on the door and the cork board. And we have a little hasp there to make sure we can lock it so no one can get in or wreck anything in there. So. And then some like final statistics. We made $730 from all those bottles and cans. And Kerbal Plastics was nice enough to donate the Lexan because that would have been really expensive uh, to buy that. And as I said earlier, Jake Lantry, he, he was a huge help to us. I wouldn't have known how to roof the, add the shingles on. And the total hours we spent was 295, three quarters. So it was a lot of work. Um, uh, thank you for letting me put that in at the village. Uh, it was a great experience. And I had fun doing it. So, very good. Thank you. So your biggest job is really is to organize the help, but yeah. you, know, you didn't do it all yourself. You had other people, with other hands to help you. Yeah, uh, that's great. A lot of my, a lot of the scouts in my dream. So, what do you attribute your successful bottle drive to? Um, well, we did it right after Christmas. Party. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> After all the parties and stuff. Yeah. Very good. Well, nice job. Thank you. It makes uh, on what's already a very nice park just a little bit nicer. So we appreciate it. Nice asset to the park. It was well built and it'll be there for many years. It's very nice. It'd be nice someday you come back, drive down to the park, and maybe, you know, 20 years from now, I might still be here. <laughs> I did that. Very good. Thank you again. All right, next up we have our swearing in ceremony. Just here, just a quick question. Steve, uh, who controls the content that goes actually into the, uh, into the board there? Is that something you're monitoring? Yeah, we don't have anything in it right now, but uh, we have two kiosks now at the, at the parts that we control. There's one over at uh, the wall that's controlled by the visitor center. Mm -hmm. But we have two now, one at the parking lot uh, off of Meadow Street and this one. And we will be putting instructions or just a notification in there if you want to rent the pavilion, how you would make notice for that. We'll put a map in there showing the park, identifying the ball fields and the perimeter trail, um, and then whatever else rules, might be happening. Are there general park rules? That uh, yeah, I don't know that I have a list of rules, but we can certainly work that up and have that in there. That'd be a good spot for that. And if there's any other notifications that anyone would like to get out to the general public, it's a place to do it. A lot of people walk their dogs there. It's right in front of the restroom. It's in a great location, and I think that uh, it's attractive enough that people will be drawn to it. And if you, if you want something that you want to get out to the public, I think it'll work well with uh, drawing them up. I am talking to ESF about the possibility of some sort of a uh, 
a self-guided nature uh, viewing in the park. Um, it's slow in developing, but it might be something that happens. And if it does, it'll come with a pamphlet. And this would be certainly a great place to distribute that pamphlet to have something there for that. Okay, we'll move on to our next part of the meeting. It's our swearing-in ceremony and reception for our newly appointed police officer, James Testani. So, up front, Lieutenant Locke would join me. Do solemnly swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. To uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And to enforce equally and impartially. And to enforce equally and impartially. The laws of the village of Baldwinsville. The laws of the village of Baldwinsville. The county of Onondaga. The county of Onondaga. And the state of New York. And the state of New York. I swear to carry out my duties. I swear to carry out my duties. In the position of police officer. In the position of police officer. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. With loyalty and fidelity. With loyalty and fidelity. To the Department of Police. To the Department of Police. Of the Village of Baldwinsville. the Village of Baldwinsville. And with dedication and honesty. And with dedication and honesty. To the citizens and people. To the citizens and people. Of the Village of Baldwinsville. With the citizens of Baldwinsville. Congratulations. Thank you very much. This is James Testani. Uh, he grew up in Norwich, New York, where he went to high school. Upon graduation, uh, he applied and was accepted to Lemoyne College, where he received a bachelor's in communication. Um, after receiving his degree, James returned to Norwich, where he ended up getting a job at the local newspaper, where he was a sports editor. Was there for a while, uh, left that job, and ended up getting a job with the county and the social services department. Was there a short time before he ended up getting hired full-time police officer for Norwich City Police Department. Um, actually, James actually returned back to the area to attend the Onondaga County Police Academy. Um, and then returned to Norwich where he was a police officer there. After a couple years, I think uh, being exposed to this area from Le Moyne and the police academy, he was kind of fond of the area and uh, him and his fiance wanted to relocate. Actually, it was perfect timing when uh, uh, they decided to relocate. He decided to get his resumes out there. He dropped them off to a number of agencies. It was perfect timing. We were actually in the midst of the hiring process and doing interviews. We were able to get them in the interview process rather quickly, and uh, we were really impressed. Uh, myself and Officer Gwynn did a background investigation on James. Uh, everyone spoke very highly of him, especially his chief, sergeant, and other officers of the department. Um, they had nothing but good things to say about him. We're sad to see him go. Um, with his training and experience, I think uh, James is going to fit in well with our department, have a good transition and uh, he's going to be an asset to our organization. So, all right. Thank you. All right. I just want to get back to Start the meeting now. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, you're, you're welcome to stay. <laughs> Next <laughs> item on the agenda is trustees' comments. We'll start with Mark. Well, I do need to uh, request an executive session this evening for to update the board on the status of the uh, PBA contract negotiations. Make that item D under new business. All right. Uh, Ruth, anything? Uh, no, just the agenda. Thank you. Bruce? The agenda's fine, thanks. Meg? Sure? Mo, just a note for you to take good notes because your recorder is out of battery or something. 
it's dead. Dead? Yeah. It just keeps turning off on me, so. Just. Is that all you have? That's all I have. <laughs> Other than that, I'll stick to the agenda. All right. Mike? Agenda. Andy? Agenda. Uh, I got a few things. Um, we did get uh, word this week that the our community development application for work at Canton Woods has been approved for next, you know, the next year's project. So that was nice to know. We had uh, put in a request through uh, Assemblyman Magnarelli's office about four years ago for help in buying um, AEDs for village buildings. And they said, yes, you've been approved for $6,000. And just six months ago, we officially were approved after we'd already bought the AEDs and so on. So I said, Is there, can we use it for anything else? So they said, well, give us an idea what you want to use it for, and we'll run it through the state process. So Steve and I had talked, and uh, originally we had talked about building a, uh, an overlook over on the Lock Street side of the river down towards the swampier area where people could go down and look for, it, for the eagles and so on. And that wasn't going to work out. So we switched. I, we said, well, maybe we could put it on the other side of the river going down to Community Park. Same spot across the river. And, uh, you know, Steve said, I think we could do it for $6,000. So we just got notification that, that that change has been accepted. So somewhere down the road, we will probably be building a little overlook for people to take pictures and so on of birds. Um, remind people. Uh, there is no meeting July 4th. Uh, that was in our uh, annual. annual meeting. We had on a list of things. We had no meeting on this date, but just to remind people. Um, Thank you. Have, hmm? Thank you. And Megan for the reminder. Me again, just in case I had forgotten. <laughs> I um, couldn't remember. Had mayor's meeting last night. Um, Ryan McMahon, our county executive, was there. Um, going off on some of the state legislation uh, that has been approved by the legislature, including a farm bill. You probably have read about that in the paper that allows farm workers to unionize and get overtime and get uh, unemployment during the off seasons and that type of stuff. It was proposed of all places by somebody that lives, you know, an assemblyman, I guess, in Queens which is a big farming part of the state. And uh, so it has no impact on them, but it will have an impact on area farms, uh, especially small farms that have a hard time absorbing um, any kind of a deficit. And now they may have to pay overtime where before they didn't and so on. So <coughs> that was not well received by people in our area. There was, has been talk about a prevailing wage law that even private construction that gets any kind of uh, grant money from uh, state or federal sources would have to pay prevailing wage, which started to scare people who, want, who wanted to do big projects because it would hugely increase the cost of the project. So it was proposed in New York City, and the assumption was people down there would make more money. Uh, when they build projects, the workers would get paid better. They did make some provision changes in that it's not going to be every project. If somebody's building uh, a business for, it's going to cost them $100,000 to build a, a building and if they're getting $5,000 in aid, they won't have to pay prevailing wage. It's not going to be, that doesn't meet the standards which are higher. And it, again, it was proposed in New York City. Uh, with the thought of protecting people in New York City, and as it turned out, the law excludes New York City. So it doesn't affect any construction in New York City, just in the rest of the state. Um, you may have heard a new stop arm law um, for buses, that you put a camera, when the arm goes down to tell people to stop, there'll be a camera, and if somebody drives by, they'll now be uh, on video and we, can go and arrest them. The interesting part is the schools will put those cameras on. The municipalities in which they drive their buses will pay for the cameras. 
So a school would come to us and say, we would like to put them on all the buses. And when they stop in the village, the arms will be activated. You have to buy and all the equipment that goes with it, which are right away scared people because they don't know how much this stuff is going to cost. And, and somebody brought up, like, in over manliest way, they have a couple villages and a town, and what, who do we have to go to? So, well, if, if two of them approve and one doesn't, then you only can have the stop arm used in those two municipalities and not in the one that won't pay for it. So, you know, you, you really kind of sit there and shake your head and say, you know, this is like, uh, all I think of is Jack Nicholson in the cuckoo's nest. You know, I mean, who is coming up with all this stuff? Uh, and basically, it, it, it really is starting to feel, uh, I didn't bring it up, other people did, but it's starting to feel like it's a, an assault on the rest of the state. You know, New York City against the rest of the state. And stay tuned and see what comes up next. Um, Mark Vineski, who is the supervisor in the town of Cicero, uh, made a passionate plea to the whole group. It was a group of supervisors and mayors. Um, he's concerned about the fact that people are accepting that the community grid uh, solution for Route 81 is a given. It's locked in. He said it's not. It's been proposed as the leading candidate. He thinks that there's room to make our voices heard. It really feels that you know it's something that's been strictly done to benefit the city at the expense of the suburbs. Uh, you know, it's been pointed out before. He pointed it out again that the town of Salina, which thrives on people coming off of Route 81, coming from Canada, and you know so on to fuel all their businesses, could could dry up. Uh, there was a lot of traffic last night on 481 getting off in Manlius and very congested. And uh, Mayor Fayetteville said, add another 50,000 cars to that mix uh, of people who won't go through the city, who will go around on 481, and, and we're going to have a mess. Uh, and apparently nobody really is too worried about it. Uh, so he wants us to take a stand and just at least tell people that to look into it, go to the public meetings that are being held. I got a list of public meetings that are coming up. There's seven or eight of them. I'll post it on our Facebook page. I'll have Mo put it on the website. So if anybody wants to go to a public meeting on Route 81 and get questions answered, you'll have access to it, and I'll make sure that's public. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, by the way, the Seneca River days were great. Um, fireworks, terrific. It was a, the island, people that were on the island told me they had to wait over an hour to get food. There were so many people. Um, Jenny Doan, uh, one of the Rotary members, said they were very close to stopping letting any more people go out there because they thought they were at capacity. Um, it was a huge draw with the, with the Ballinsville pep band. You know, there's quite a few members in the pep band. Uh, they came in and, of course, all their friends and family, and it like doubled the amount of people on the island. And uh, they had four food trucks, two dessert trucks. And that couldn't really couldn't handle all the people. That was they were packed. Uh, it was a nice night, and fireworks was great. I went over Saturday. Had tons of a variety of things to do uh, for kids, and uh, it was very nice. Hats off to the Rotary. I know Bruce is a member of the Rotary, and uh, they do a great job when they put on an event. So. We'll move on to department heads. We'll start with our attorney, Bob. Uh, I've been talking with our treasurer and also our village engineer relative to some expenditures that are in his budget uh, concerning uh, some repairs that need to be made at uh, Paper Mill Island. Uh, and as you recall, we um, formalized the um, uh, re reserve funds, the repair reserve funds that the village has created. So we'll need a, a resolution to uh, uh, I authorize those expenditures, which is subject to a public hearing notice. Um, what I suggested to them was to get a, a, and we can discuss this, but I'd like that added to the agenda, and we can, uh, uh, my recommendation would be to have a uh, uh, resolution authorizing expenditures up to the limit in his budget, 
so that those repairs can be made and then though that would uh, uh, expire if at the end of the year he hadn't uh, made all those expenditures but uh, this way we don't have to come back for each and every little expenditure because he does have a program so if we could add that to the budget that would I mean to the uh, agenda that would be good okay so we'll make that item D an executive session be other, other than that I'll, I'll stick with the agenda okay <clears throat> All right. we'll move on to our code officer Greg I'll speak to the agenda. Okay. College Clark, Mo. Uh, I don't know if you recall, I, I believe the last couple of years McQuaid, uh, uh, the rowers came through. They're coming through again on Friday. Uh, they're going to row through Lock 24 about mid-morning and lunchtime on Friday the 28th. They may stop briefly at Mercer Park. Um, they'll be having <clears throat> two RVs, a truck and trailer, a couple of su support vehicles. They'll also have a rowing shell and one pontoon support boat. So if anyone's interested in checking them out, it'll be about... What was the roughly the time? Uh, Mid-morning to lunch time. Like between 10 and 12, somewhere yeah. in there? Yeah. And I think then they're heading... Remember going down, I have a picture in my office. So right. Oh, they, they, this is a fundraiser. Yes, it's it's called Row for Hope. Yeah. They, they get sponsors for how many miles they row, so they come down the canal and back up, I guess, and then report to people that they, did, you know, X number of miles and get money for some cause. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it sounded like a good one when I heard it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure. So that's tomorrow, or is it next Friday? No, no it's the 28th. 28th. Otherwise. I will stick to the agenda. You think? Hmm? You think? <laughs> yeah, I also had the 4th of July talk to See? mark down. So the next meeting will be July 18th. See, we've got, because last time we had something like that, we both forgot. Right. <laughs> this time we both remember. All right, we'll move on to our treasurer, Anna. Yes, I have something. Um, I have finished the annual financial report to the Office of State Comptroller's Office, and it's done, it's completed, it balanced the first time, for, and I didn't have to call the accountant. She sent me a message <laughs> the other day and said I sent it in, and it came back saying, I hit that button no and changes it. required. I said, that I thought she should go get I got that blank sheet of paper, <laughs> which is, I've been waiting for for six years. Mm -hmm. Good job. No yeah, errors. Very good. You're getting good at this. Doesn't mean they won't call us. They always call us about something. But. So that's, it's done. My life awesome. can start again. Woohoo! <laughs> piece of cake. <laughs> Very good, Anna. Thank you. Yep. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay, we'll move across the aisle to the senior center. Ruth? Uh, Cantonwood's 2018 annual report was emailed out to the mayor and both town supervisors, so they have that. And um, also, uh, this week I addressed the Van Buren Town Board on Tuesday evening and this evening I addressed the Lysander Town Board just to bring them up to date on what's going on at the Senior Center and stop in and say hello. Uh, so I just wanted to make this board aware of that. And uh, concert coming up at the Senior Center next Thursday, week from today, June 27th at 3 o'clock, Rock Shadows. So folks are welcome to come on in and enjoy that. They play basic rock music, all the songs that you would be familiar with, so come on in. I also want to thank the DPW. Um, there was paving going on, and I'm sure Steve will speak more to that, but I appreciate their patience with helping our folks get into the senior center safely, and um, we were able to keep going, business as usual. So we want to thank you for that and appreciate that. And that's it. Very good. Move on to public work. Steve. We do have paving going on. That's kind of the, uh, the effort this week with our highway department. Uh, we were interrupted because of the weather today, but we'll be back to it tomorrow and probably finish up on Saturday. So we may have some road closures on Mercer and Crego on Saturday. That's it. We did have a little extra water in the village this morning. Huh? We did, yeah. And uh, I think I told you earlier, but uh, Supervisor Saracini had called and said that he has, he's not, he doesn't think any water from the town is coming in and causing village problems, but he would like to make sure that that's the case. And so as, as we look at where some of the flooding was, uh, he'd like to be included in 
making sure if there is town water leaking into village drainage areas that, that they could do something about it so okay i appreciated hearing from them and uh, hopefully we can make some progress next up the police well, lieutenant lockwood um nothing and i'm sure the chiefs brought this up before um in the lobby of the police department we have the medication disposal boxes and the sharps disposal boxes um we also have a medication disposal box at canton Woods senior center um, but just to let you guys know i don't know if the chiefs ever told you um, the needle disposals um, we get contracted out to a company and uh, they collect them and they weigh it um, i don't know where we rank for the needle collection but for the medication we're one of the top agencies around there's a uh, Camillus and I believe Cicero and us are the top producers for people turning in medicine. So, so, the, word, the, word has so the word has gotten out, but uh, even more people, anytime you have any medication, just come in. You don't have to wait for a, a DEA drug take back at Kinney Drugs or any of the stores. You can just drop it off here at the Village Hall or if you're a member down at Canton Wood Senior Center. Very good. That's it. Thanks, Lieutenant. Nice to see you. Move on to pending business. I get a motion to adopt a proposed local law amending the Village Code of the Village of Bowersville, Chapter 345, entitled Zoning, to add Article 27, establishing and setting forth the regulations for the Downer Street Plan Development District for parcels located at unnumbered parcel on Meg's Road, 113 Downer Street, 131 Downer Street, unnumbered parcel on Downer Street, and 197 Downer Street. I'll make a motion. Second. Discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. So that's two down. We still have anything left, Bob? Well, um, yeah, the last area, which is a PDD, um, is the uh, the area down where the, the senior center is, and so we need to take a look at that, that, that whole area and, and what's going on. So that's that's next I, the, the board has done a great job and, and the planning board as well in reviewing these and uh, with uh, and going over this with greg and steve to, uh, so that we now have these all in our code book and people can can find them so this is good good thanks for your help uh, we'll move on to new business item a can i get a motion to waive the open container law on paper mill island from 4 p.m to 10 30 p.m during the following 2019 creative concert events Wednesday July 3rd Friday July 12th Saturday July 13th Saturday July 27th Friday August 2nd Saturday August 10th Saturday August 17th Thursday September 19th and Friday September 27th 2019 moved second any discussion questions all in favor Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Like Chuck, we're going to have us busy this summer. Some of those are tentative dates, but I thought I would present them tonight and have them later. Again, I see somebody that he has coming. I've never heard of him, and I have people say to me, oh my God, I can't believe that guy's coming. He's one of the best. There's a country singer, I think it's Chase Rice, maybe. Grandson sends me a message the other night. He's coming to the paper mill. I he's my favorite singer. So how do I know that stuff? But uh, it's nice to know that, that we're getting people that are popular. That, uh, obviously, Chuck knows what he's talking about, so that's good. Item B, a motion to appoint Jody DePaulis as deputy village clerk, an annual salary of $36,500 with an effective date of Monday, July 15th, 2019. Move. Second. Questions? This will give Jody um, a month and a half at least to work with Linda to learn the uh, system for water billing and uh, the other parts of the, the job that she has that, you know, there's a lot more to that job than just answering telephones and stuff like that. And uh, we think it's you know, fortunate that we can have somebody on board to learn uh, at, at Linda's side and learn from Mo and Rosemary and Anna and, uh, before they get stuck under the gun. 
So, all right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. I thank uh, Meg, Mo, and Steve for the interviews and scanning all the applicants. And yeah, I think we received probably 140 resumes. Wow. Out of that, some were weeded out because of the county restriction, but otherwise. Yeah. The treasurer? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, 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 yeah. We kept our eyes open. Oh, we Steve. Yeah. Well, that's good. We got, mm -hmm. we uh, hopefully got somebody real good that way. Mm -hmm. um, item C: Discussion possible action regarding an unsafe structure at 119 East Genesee Street. I'm assuming that's Greg. Yes. This is a structure that we have already uh, started the process on, but during the process, uh, the property was sold. And we have a new owner. Uh, the new owner hired a contractor, uh, begun some repair work. Um, I was told that the contractor ran off with their funds, and they were looking for a new contractor. Um, but so far, it's been over six months you know, since there's been any activity or uh, yeah, anything on the house That's so the, the tan house that sits all by itself on the corner like yes yeah, corner Phillips and uh, East Genesee Street there um, they are mowing the lawn which is surprising but uh, there's been no activity and nothing coming to my office uh, for any kind of uh, permits so um, I want to uh, but talk to Bob and we have to restart the process because we do have a new new owner so I would just need a resolution from the board um, allowing me to uh, move forward with an order for that owner to either repair or demolish that structure. Can we get a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Any other discussion? I, I think, uh, you know, once we uh, serve them with the notice, uh, they have uh, 30 days to respond. Uh, then we would move forward with any kind of structural assessment, hopefully move this uh, along faster. So is it unsafe or just unoccupied? It's unoccupied, but uh, there's uh, no roofing on portions of it. There's holes in the roof where they had started repairs. It's, it's bad. So this isn't starting the process, whatever article number it is, that allows you to demolish it? Yes, it is starting that process. Okay. Yes. And this has been a vacant building for... It's been, while, vacant for, right? it's been vacant for a long yeah. time. I, I suggested because of the fact that you've got... Uh, uh, Questions as to whether you, or not the notice was actually said. If you if you continued the other uh, process with the new owner, there might be objections as to uh, jurisdiction because um, <coughs> the new owner didn't get notification, was never told about it, and so forth. So it it you might just as well start over again and then uh, speed the process. Is there a way, Bob, to make the notification somehow that it's to this individual and successor? So in the event that this is sold again six months or 12 months from now, we don't start the clock all over again? I'll work with Greg on that. Okay. That would be good if we could. And are no, you uh, one, moving forward property, on some of the other properties? Went the, well, went through the county, too. So yeah, the, uh, I'm just curious about the uh, property over by Barnes Dairy, the old Barnes Dairy. Those structures. Uh, that looks like it's in... It's falling apart, and people are breaking windows. And uh, well, the uh, the owner did remove the windows and doors. Uh, they were going to demolish the structures, and then for whatever reason, didn't. Um, I have spoken to them, but I need to move forward with uh, official notice of violation for those properties. Uh, see if they're going to move forward with uh, any of their plans. Um, but yeah, those are another concern. The other property would be the fire department's house on Oneida Street. Um, Bob spoke with their attorney, the uh, the fire district attorney today, and uh, in hopes to get them to move forward. Uh, you know, they were looking to sell the property. Um, the property was secured, but it's it's further deteriorating. So shouldn't we start the process on all of them? Well, the because uh, we lose fire department's in process, but it's been a, uh, I guess for whatever political reasons, I guess we haven't uh, moved forward with them. So, and what what politi no political reasons? Up here. I I would agree I would agree with that. But yeah. uh, it, it, well, let me just put it this way: I um, in in order to um, move this along on a, on a quicker schedule, I thought that it would be better to alert the um, uh, the current president of the 
uh, fire department through their council uh, rather than have us start something and have the council on board rather than have us start something have their attorney come in and object to things uh, it's always a lot easier to uh, grease the skids ahead of time so I don't disagree with you but isn't it uh, absolutely you start at the t clock is significant right. anyway if we don't start the clock on things that parcel has been an issue for a number of years right so it isn't it's not a new phenomenon not at all um, I mean if, if this board wants me to move forward with the the same orders on the uh, properties on Salina Street 51 Salina I'm more than willing to do that I think it just gets more attention yes and, and we don't lose the time okay it's what we had to do across the street Good. So we have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. And a lot of discussion. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, just for Aye. clarification for the record, what did what uh, on the motion, what properties were included in the motion? Just the one. Just the one, okay. And then we talked with Greg about let's start yeah. moving forward on the other yeah. things. Okay. Okay. So we can just so so we can find out what the attorney's response is regarding the fire department and maybe yes. greg you can work something up for the next meeting for yes, 51 was, yes. street yes okay yeah he was, he was uh, uh, very cooperative when i talked to him he, and i know it's very frustrating for us but really frustrating for greg because you know he's talking to all these people and oh yeah we'll take we're going to take care of things and you know then it's like so then you go on to other stuff and come back and well they haven't touched anything and, uh, that's well, why i think we should set up the clock in motion yep i agree i told him be aggressive uh next item this is the um, setting up a, a resolution the funds for paper mill island how would we word that bob and Jack? um well this is here. we we had created the uh, pmi amphitheater maintenance reserve fund and um, in the village engineers budget there are some expenditures to be made this year and rather than uh, and, and under the general municipal law since we formalized the uh, uh, reserve funds in order to take funds out we need a uh, motion and then a public hearing so rather than have it come out in drabs what my suggestion would be and i've talked with steve about this is to adopt a resolution authorizing the amount of his budget which is twenty one thousand dollars that the expenditures uh, out of the fund uh, for the the uh, current uh, village fiscal year of twenty one thousand dollars be approved and that the motion would uh, uh, extend just to the end of the year um, and then uh, lapse at that time so that would allow him to go ahead and make those expenditures uh, and then uh, uh, you know have whatever whatever it costs up to that amount but that's that's required under the general municipal law because we as you recall we formalized the uh, uh, several maintenance funds right so we can do this part of it without a public hearing and just no we need a public, need hearing. A public hearing so that's the first order of business resolution to hold the public. we need a resolution and that would be on the 18th on the 18th of july yes can i get a motion moved second all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. So public hearing for July 18th at 7.30 p.m. And Steve, the $21,000 in your budget, those are all repairs specifically to Paper Mill Island, the amphitheater on Paper Mill Island? Yeah, what it was? <clears throat> what it was was that we, we put in the budget $21,000 to redo uh, replace the shed that's out there that's used for maintenance and a fence around it. I reviewed it with uh, Jeff Boardwell and we've decided that we think we can upgrade the fence, which we've already done, and now we'll give it a coat of paint and I think we can salvage the building as well. We just replaced the ramp going up to it. So in, in the end, so we had a $21,000 budget. It was excluded from my budget, but put in a line item saying to be allocated from the amphitheater fund. So, uh, and we have a total of $21,000. I don't anticipate using it now because we were gonna replace the building and the fence with an outside contractor. Instead, we're just gonna maintain those two items with in-house people. I expect the expenditures to be substantially less, but I would like to get the authorization for the full amount so we don't have to deal with 
additional public hearings in the future this year. And I think as Bob mentioned, if we don't spend it in the fiscal year, it just dissolves and that fund would stay in the reserve. No. no. We got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Anything else before we move into executive session that we need to bring up? Does the resolution occur after the public hearing? The public hearing's on the resolution. Yes, it is. We, we haven't made have a resolution yet. Yeah. The resolution is under the general municipal law. Um, it's The resolution is adopted subject to the public hearing, yeah. not a referendum. In some cases, you actually need a referendum. Whatever. So we just did that. We just did the public hearing. We're not doing the resolution. Right. I think the point being, we yeah. set a public hearing on a resolution that we don't know what it says yet. Right. To expand up to $21,000. Yeah. Something uh, like that. Yeah. I, will, I will set so that up there. The there. line of reserve fund, yes. Okay. And top of that. We have nothing else. Can I get a motion to adjourn executive session? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No action. Anticipate.